Martial Arts Odyssey. Today I am in Shanghai, that's in China. And we are at Fighters Unite Gym. And this is Mr. Silas Maynard. He's the head coach, the owner, and a phenomenal fighter. Silas, tell the folks at home how many fights you have. Uh, I've lost count maybe after 50. That's yeah, fun. this guy, I've heard numbers all the way up to 90, and I've heard as few as zeros. So somewhere between zero and 90. No, no, the guy's had an insane number of fights. So do you say that, like, because yeah, people don't know about coming to China and fighting here. Well, the great thing about coming to China is uh, what you can do here is very diverse. We have Sun, that K1, Muay Thai, and of course MMA fights. Uh, and basically, we can we have a chance to fight two or three times a week, uh, which I do sometimes. And the uh, money's quite a bit better here than China. It can be. Yeah. yeah I mean, again, well, even for the beginner guy, for, for a guy with no fight, but, but good enough to get into the ring of the ring of the cage, uh, you're looking at probably about 500 bucks, which is better than Thailand. 500 dollars. I mean, in Thailand, I fought for 300 baht. Yeah. Nine bucks is the way. Yeah. So I mean, it's definitely you can actually make a living here as a, as a, as a beginning fighter, and you can fight frequently. Second shoot, fights going on every every single day. There's just fights. Going on. Yeah. Because there's these sports universities like all over the country, and the guys are just training Sunda full time, and then they just fight professionally. So it's really insane, man. I did not know about it. You know, and I. And, and, and the cool thing is, the, the more you fight here, the more face builds up uh, in China. Uh, like even, even if you're Steven Skull or Van Amber, you know, one, you know, somebody that has a name outside the country, if you come here, you're still going to fight for 500 bucks. Right, right, right. After you get maybe uh, five or ten fights in China, the, the, the money actually starts going up to a thousand, three thousand. Now I'm fighting for around one, which is uh, ten thousand five hundred to ten thousand. Wow. Uh, just not, not because of wins, not because of anything, just because people know who I am. Because I'm yeah, and I mean, not to play the race card, but being a white guy fighting in China, it's easy to get a following, get kind of popular and known and stuff like that. And actually, you don't even have to win. You could be the professional opponent. Those guys sure. do okay, too, you know? Yeah. That, that, that's how guys like Bob Sapp paid their rent for years and years in Japan. Well, to be honest, when, when I first came over here, I mean, jiu-jitsu was my preference, and, and I started fighting K1 and Sanda right, and, right. and whatnot, and I was getting my ass kicked by, by a little 16-year-old son kids. And eventually, I started winning, and now I have about a 50-50 record, which is a something that you brag about, but when you, you're fighting somebody that's been training for 10 or 20 years, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it is what it is, and it's helped my MMA game. And you got a lot of fights, you learn from yeah. the losses, right? For sure. And, um, yeah, uh, yeah, and uh, you see, you know, it's, it, it, you were saying if, if you're famous outside the country, they may not know you here. Like, for example, when I came to China, when I trained here the first time 10 years ago, no one had heard of MMA. No one had even heard of UFC. This time, I was at the university giving a presentation, one of the professors asked me, Oh, what you're talking about? That's like MMA, and then one of the other, and a female professor goes, "What's MMA? Is that that UFC thing?" So I mean, the awareness is definitely growing. The awareness is growing, and the money's growing. All right, and then now you can hear some rumors, guys that have fought here. They say it's unfair. They're judging this match. I gotta say, the fights I've seen, I will say this: the the rules are a bit loose. But I mean, I don't think it's unfair. I mean, it's just that you sign up for a fight, you think it's K1 rule, and the guy does a Sanda throw on you. You just got to accept it. And you know what? You can get up and do a Sanda throw on him. Well, the, th the great thing about fighting here is if you're not the first fight of the night, you, you see how the referees are still judging the match. Uh, since the Chinese have a, have a Sanda background, you, you expect to be thrown to the ground. Sometimes the judges will, after one Sanda throw, that you know, tell the guys crazy that you're going to get disqualified. And then other times they'll just let it go on for all ten right. fights. But you're allowed to do it back. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, yeah, you know what? Living in China, man, there's an art to it. Part of it is just accepting that things are not always going to be according to the rule, but it's still fair in some like weird cosmic sense, you know? Yeah, I mean, that fight, that fight I watched with you guys, I didn't see any bad decisions. I mean, I really didn't. I didn't see any. I, no, I saw one really bad decision. But anyway, but not involving a foreigner. <laughs> no, and the other thing is, if you want, if you want to win, don't put it in the hands of the judge. You know, there's no fight in China. You knock the guy out and they wake him up and give him the trophy. Well, there was this one. No. <laughs> Never have. The man standing here on my left. Very brave man. His name is Hector. Hector, you are what? You're half Japanese and half Spanish. No, is that right? Half English, half French. Half English, half French. Does that ever go to war inside you? Like, no, it's useful because when you're in France, you can say you're French, and when you're in England, you can say English, so you never get in trouble. That's a good one. And you can always be a foreigner, no matter where you go. Exactly. And, you, and you've been living in China for a long time. I've been living in China for about six. This is my sixth year. Now, so. Jesus, and you're only 16, right? I'm um, 16, yeah. You know who you are? You're Christian Bale. He's the kid in the movie Empire of the Sun. This is him. He grew up in Shanghai. If there's a war, he's not going to know where to go. I do actually. 
Uh, <laughs> Alright, so so tell the guys at home now, Daniel, you know, you've been training with Silas, was he your first coach? Yeah, so uh, I did stand up for a bit, but um, I didn't like the game. I didn't, I didn't feel like I learned much, and I came to Silas, and since then, like, it's been like, the home team, best man, it's like, the one I, Silas is the best coach. And, yeah. Kids here every day. Alright, and you've had how many fights now? Uh, four fights. Okay, he's Four fights now. Now people outside of China don't know. I didn't even know, and I, I've even trained here before. I lived in China. I didn't realize how good the pro sandal was till I got here. And pro sandal here is almost like Muay Thai in Thailand. Like those guys start when they're eight years old. Some of them are living in sports academies. I read uh, there's 3,000 kids right now living in sports academies learning to fight. So in this case, he's going in there and he's fighting guys that not only have 15 years of experience, but they're like 22 years old. And all of them. I mean, you're fighting men. Yeah, but I don't think age plays much of a part. I think it's about skills. Like I think it does. I've seen you fight. <laughs> I think so. All right, man. Anything you want to tell the folks at home? Yeah. Uh, folks in America? I want to fight is United, Shanghai, and come to China. Otherwise. Otherwise. I always watch UFC, you know, and learn from UFC. Watch UFC and learn from UFC. Spoken like a true man. Yeah. <laughs> And at the end of the day, what are the two most effective arts for getting the guy on the ground? Uh, judo and wrestling. Yeah. Judo and wrestling, getting yeah. the guy on the ground. Yeah. But I noticed you modify some of the judo throws. So what's different between MMA and judo and regular judo? Uh, in judo, a lot of times they'll, they'll do the throw and it's for points. And what we like to do is stay nice and close, turn the hips into it. Just like a normal judo throw, we're going to hold an arm really tight, hold him around the body really tight, and then we're going to fall with all of our weight on top of the guy. So hopefully we're not going to win out of weight, but at the very least we're... Okay. Okay. And one of the big things, you know, because we're in Asia, so when we go fight or when these guys go fight or whatever, you got guys from Sundai, you got guys from Muay Thai, all different martial arts. Now, one of the things about Muay Thai is that when they throw the guy, they want to still be standing. Right. That's actually more points in Muay Thai. I guess Sundai too. Sundai, right. right, right. So the difference in MMA, you pretty much have to go. Well, you don't have to, but. It makes it, it little takes, sense to it, not. Take, it takes a lot of energy to, to throw a guy. Right. It doesn't matter if you use perfect technique or not. So if you're going to throw a guy, you, you want to be on top. You, you want to capitalize. Yeah, you want to capitalize on it. Some guy, I mean, some of the guys that I know, like, they, they don't, they're not very good at ground fighting. They throw the guy, maybe they just get a couple of cheap shots in and then, and then stand up. But you capitalize it somehow, right? Yeah, we well, prefer to stay on top and just grind them up. And right. Drop and slip bubbles, but whatever you, you need to do. But you stay nice and tight. Right, so anytime you throw the guy, you're pretty much going to land in inside your control position. That's going to be a control position. Alright, okay, now, Silas has some crazy, weird submission stuff. I mean, I hope you don't understand that. But, but his submissions are different, man. It, it's not exactly, I mean, I know you've had BJJ. But I, I am a white belt with four stripes okay. uh, as of five years ago in uh, the States. I'll be honest with you, uh, uh, Guy BJJ was, was influential in what I've done. Right. Uh, but I've been in China for five years and I've kind of taught myself and brought in a lot of my coaches. And, uh, you, I mean, because I, I, you know, I've rolled inside since I've been here in boxing and stuff. I mean, what he's doing is more like muscle submission wrestling. Like a guillotine or a... Or, or, we, we have a one-handed guillotine where you just put it on your chest yeah. I mean, that's a, I'm going to beat you there. That's pretty common. Yeah. You punch. And then you go to the ground. And absolutely one time. Okay. Let's show the folks at home. Okay. Okay. A one, a two, a one, two, three, four.